we were basically treated as subhuman beings, like animals. Using the term that people in the outside world use, I would describe my life in the prison camp as that of a slave. Mm. The idea of escaping from North Korea, I mean, it, it really defies belief, but there has been an escape. Uh, this, it, it's, it could well be unique, maybe one or two, but the book about uh, this man and what happened, Escape from Camp 14, the author is, is Blaine Harden. He joins us now from Seattle. Blaine, welcome to you. Thank you. Good to be here. Now, it, it, it's, it really is, as I said in the introduction, it's almost impossible to, to believe that somebody could escape from North Korea. Tell us about this particular man and his story. Well, what's interesting about Shin is that he was born in the camp that he escaped from. No one born in these camps, which have existed for, for more than 50 years, uh, who's been born in the camp has escaped. So he, he, he brought out a story that was completely unique. Uh, he managed to escape because he was almost insanely lucky. Um, he met a person who told him that the, there was a world outside the camp, told him that if he, if he left the camp, he could eat. Uh, he could, particularly, he could eat grilled meat. Uh, and it was uh, dreams of grilled meat, actually, that it inspired his desire to risk his life to, to escape. And he, he tried to escape with this guy, uh, an outsider uh, to the camp who'd, who had only known for a short time. And that man uh, died on the electric fence that mm. surrounded Camp 14. And Shin crawled over his body. Uh, once he got outside the camp, though, um, the person who was to ex escort him to China was dead on the fence. Uh, still, Shin, through uh, good luck, through, through cunning and smarts, he managed to walk and ride out of North Korea in 30 days. What events occurred? I mean, Shin dong Yak was born in, a camp, in the camp, you said. I mean, how did that materialize? Well, he was bred in the camp. Uh, he was very much created almost like a hog in a farm was, oh, is created oh. in, you know, in Canada or in the United States. He was bred. The, car, the, the guards in the camp uh, approached his, his mother and father and told them to, uh, to have sex. And after he was born, he was basically raised by the guards according to the rules of the camp. He was very suspicious of his mother. And his mother didn't seem to like him very well. Uh, he would steal her food if he could, and for that she would often beat him, sometimes brutally with a, with a hoe. Yeah. Um, and so he, he grew up in this world where he responded to the guards, and the guards were telling them to, to snitch on their parents and on their friends mm -hmm. uh, and to f obey the rules of the camp. The number one rule of the camp was if you try to escape, you'll be shot. And if you hear of other people planning an escape and fail to report it, you'll also be shot. Right. That rule figured into his early life. When he was 13, he heard his mother and brother talking about escape, and he turned them in. Uh, uh, several months later, they were executed in front of him, and he was the responsible person because he turned them in. Uh, and what is truly horrifying about that terrible story is that he felt no guilt or remorse for what he had done yeah. because he was following the rules that he'd been taught to follow. And only after he escaped in his mid-20s did he realize what a relationship should be between a mother and son. Right. Yeah, th th there are st stories from Stalin's gulags, and they're rather moving, of, of, of men who were sent to them, and they're approached by other men who are imprisoned, and they say, no, don't come near me. You're all enemies of the state. Stalin would never make a mistake, but he has with me. I'll be released within a day, but you people are obviously guilty. And then he realized that everyone, tens of thousands, were all saying the same thing. They were there for no particular reason. What is the reasoning behind these camps? Why was he bred? Was it to, to be a slave? What's the purpose of it all? Well, it, it's interesting that you should bring up Stalin. Uh, Kim Il-sung, the, the great leader, the, the inventor of North Korea, if you will, he was a student uh, uh, and a follower of Stalin, and he devised the, the gulag in North Korea in very much as an Im imitation of what Stalin had going 
in the Soviet Union at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, Stalin died in 1953, and Kim Il-sung didn't get around to building his camps until the late 1950s. But they have been there ever since, uh, more than twice as long as, the, as the, the, uh, the gulag in the Soviet Union. And they're still going strong. In fact, there's satellite information in, in recent months that they're actually expanding. Right. Um, so the camps ser serve a very particular purpose. Uh, it's the same purpose that, that Stalin invented the gulag. They were to isolate and eliminate those few people who are brave enough to object to the state and to scare the hell out of everybody else. Right. And to that end, they have worked very well in North Korea. The population is quiescent in the extreme. Mm. Do we know numbers? Do we know how many people are in these camps? The numbers seem to have declined in recent years. They're guesses. Uh, but somewhere between maybe 80 and 120,000 is the current uh, guess. Uh, uh, as recently as three years ago, the guess was about 200,000. But where the camps are and, and the fact that there are people in the camps is not a guess at all, because there is very good high-definition high satellite imagery of all the camps now. Mm -hmm. And some of them are very big. Camp 14 is, is, is quite a big place. It's, it's like 28 miles wide and, wow. and 14 miles long. Um, it, it's, it's, it's threaded through the high mountains of North Korea, and there are farms and factories. Uh, there and the population now is estimated at about 15,000. It had been as high as 50,000. Really, and, and, and as you mentioned earlier with this story, it, it's multi generational. There are people who know nothing else. Shin's illust is is illustrative of, of of what happens in the camps. His father's brothers fled North Korea for the South in the wake of the Korean War, which ended in 1953. Yep. His family was rounded up sometime in the early 60s and brought to Camp 14. Right. And Shin's crime was to have been born in the camp. Yep. Yep. Uh, and he was raised to sort of wash away the sins of his relatives. Incredible. Yeah, but Blaine, it, it's an extraordinary story uh, and, and extremely well told in the book as well. Thank you very much indeed. My pleasure. Thank you.